Nail or beauty school was just the beginning, right? What on earth do you do now? Welcome to the Salon Success Podcast with Monaco Nail Academy. Our topics stretch beyond nails and into all things salon related, business, marketing, and social media, and at the very least hits you with real honest stories about our experiences. This isn't school, this is real life, real business, and really freaking hard work. The Sell on Success podcast is recorded live on Mondays at 5 p.m. NZT via facebook.com slash Monaco Nail Academy and available on Spotify and Google playlists. Before we get started, wherever you are, thumbs up, tag a friend in the comments or hit that share button and support small business. Hey guys, Penny here from Monaco Nail Academy, and today for the Sell on Success podcast, I am joined by Janelle Hi. and Rochelle, Hi. and we are trying to get Mariah in with us, but I'm not sure that we can hear her. Are you there, Mariah? I don't think we can hear her, um, so we might be Mariah-less today, but either way, um, we're going to have a great time. Bye, Mariah. Uh, she's going to... Um, She's going to drop out, I think, and leave us just with Janelle, who is working on Rochelle's nails while I um, lead the agenda, we're going to call it, um, for today. So I think Janelle needs to move a little to the left for us to be able to see what she's doing. Of course, if you're listening to this on Spotify or um, Google Playlist, then you can't see what Janelle's doing. But it is um, live streaming on our Facebook page as we record this. So today's um, podcast topic is all about nail art, um, and um, this was Janelle's suggestion. So hopefully we're going to have some good ideas flowing through for you, more about how to get started. Um, of course, this podcast is a little more nail-centric than some of our others where we're trying to cover um, general beauty and sell on life. But let's jump straight into it by talking about how we each got into nail art. So for me, I know... Um, like there was in my course, which was very short, way too short. Um, there was an evening that was nail art and I'm sure it was a filler because honestly it was like 12 evenings of three hours each and each evening was a full set. But one of those was given up to nail art. Um, but our educator taught us how to do a daisy with dots, which I still teach now, but like it's, it's pretty basic. Um, and what I think something else I can't remember and then said we could go play and it was coming up to Christmas and I drew honestly the worst Santa in a sleigh <laughs> and like it, it was it looked like a finger painting and my educator was mind blowing she was just like oh my god how did you do it you have to show us so that was my introduction to nail art but honestly like 11 years ago it really wasn't that big of a thing like no mm. one was doing it um but from that point, I guess I was known amongst my clients as being like this amazing nail artist just because um, in a world of French and square, I would like custom mix colored acrylics for the tip and would do like a blue tip with a diamante in the corner. Ooh. And like it was real itchy. I so that's how I got into nail art um, and also like fueled by boredom I guess because when you're doing square French 17,000 times over and over again I'm like please let me make your tips blue I don't care just let me put a diamante in the corner <laughs> and I would get the same rush from putting a diamante on someone's ring finger literally one that I get now from like painting Scooby-Doo oh like <laughs> um so Janelle how did you get started in nail art um I think I've always just been like really arty because I was studying graphic design and then when I was just doing play manis all the time, it was kind of just so boring and I just wanted something different. And yeah, it was actually, I think, in one of the classes here that I was like, I just want to play. And <laughs> um, I ended up doing like a marble design and everyone was like, show me how you did it. <laughs> so, kind of the same thing as you where it was like, show me how you did it. And so I was like, okay, I like this now. I'm, I'm, I'm important. I'm popular. That's <laughs> exactly how I got into nails because um, I did not want to be a nail tech and I didn't want to train. I just couldn't think of anything better. And so I started training and halfway through the course, I was like, 
I was quite obviously the best in my class of four, but that's not to say I was good. Yeah. That's to say that, like, no one else actually really wanted to Everyone be there. was just a bit shit. <laughs> no, they, they just really, like, two of them were hairdressers that had been basically forced to come by their salon. Like, they didn't care. One of the girls, I feel quite bad about this now, but I thought it was funny, but the educator literally said to one of the hairdressers one night when she came in was what she was supposed to be backfilling, and she had done the full set at home, and she was like, did you do this in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> that poor burn. girl. Like, I don't think I realized at the time what a burn it was. Yeah. Because I think she was like, oh, I didn't have any lights. Like, I think she actually did do it in the dark. Oh, um, so <laughs> oh, that's geez. the thing that happened. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, like halfway through when I started getting compliments for nails, I was like, oh, this is fun now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hi, Teresa and Tony. I can see you guys watching on Facebook Live. Pop into the comments and say hi if you are watching us live because we'd love to bring you into the conversation. Um, so, Rochelle, tell us about your background with nail art. I know you're much newer into the game, but um, you've been doing it a wee while. How did you get into nail art? Um, basically, nail art's the reason I started to be a nail team. It's got to um, be something. My mum is Bebo Nails. Um, and, yeah, back when she started, it was all French and plain colours and... It's still quite hard for her, I think, um, to get her head around like nail art and stuff. She uses stamps and, and that kind of thing. Love stamping yeah. now. But um, yeah, for me, that is like my creative outlet because I'm a creative person, but I can't put what's on my brain onto like paper and stuff. Um, and But for me, I don't know why, but I love playing around with like the plastic tips and people's nails and stuff. So yeah, I don't really remember how I got into it. I remember watching a ton of youtube videos and then i was sick of the weekend and binge watching the art of nails which you can buy from monaco nail academy oh, yes you can plug. monaco yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, i highly yeah. recommend them they're really really good and they go into heaps of detail and it just reinforced the fact that i love like i love playing with stuff yeah playing's um, the best yeah, i think like that's my thing too i'm so like much, real and it's fidgety. like a real i don't know stress release for me like yeah i can spend all day in my town playing on basic tips mm. and come out and be like Oh, it's nine o'clock at night, but I want to keep going. It's like, like what I talked about last week when I was like, I was seriously like jaded with nails until I had a playtime with nail art. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. I forgot I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you are watching our live recording on our Facebook page, then jump in the comments and tell us how you got into nail art if you are a nail tech yourself. Um, and I want to talk about how we've evolved as nail artists because I know especially for me with my – finger painted Santa on a sleigh <laughs> I hope I've evolved I think like I definitely didn't have the right tools mm. like that's one thing that drastically changed my evolution as a nail artist I started out with these um nail polishes that came like instead of having a normal brush in them they had a like I guess a striper in them um and it was all traditional polish because gel polish hadn't been invented gel paint oh hadn't God, been invented ladies. I know I'm <laughs> ancient um None of these things existed. So if you wanted nail art, it was going to be traditional polish. Um, and so I was using traditional polish on a striper that lived in the, like, polish bottle and didn't have any other tools. Ugh. So I guess, I suppose, I mean, I had stripers, um, but being able to have a choice of mediums, gel polish and gel paint and acrylic paint, all these things, that's drastically changed. So I now, I just think I am much more refined. It doesn't quite look like finger painting now unless I want it to. Um, Rochelle, do you think that you've evolved in any way? Yeah, so I've, I'm have i really new, like Penny said. I've only been studying now since February um, and I'm only three weeks off um, Monaco's course as well. But um, for me, just I guess learning the, the theory behind um, nail art, I know that sounds real weird, but like even just something basic like don't mix blue and the opposite of that like, <laughs> like, like don't think of the color wheel like don't mix those colors together well, that's why you get brown blue's one that you can yeah. kind of mix with yeah anything. i'm trying to think like yeah. orange blue and orange mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah but like i was i would do something and be like why does this look so shit and then i studied with monaco and i looked at and i you know i did all those courses and then i was like oh okay that's why that looks like <laughs> shit um you know, and just learning about, um, like Penny said, acrylic paint. And no idea that you could put acrylic paint on a nail and then still cure it and it'd be fine. Um, I've been struggling to try and do lines with gel paint, uh, gel polish. Just little things like that. Just because um, you have to go over it twice. Yeah, yeah. And it just makes everything thicker. 
so that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I'm still really um, new. My favorite thing is abstract because then they don't have to look yes. the same. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I And we'll get into a little bit more about this with, from my perspective later, but um, I don't necessarily like abstract because I'm so technical. Like I want mm. to have rules. Um, Janelle, how have you evolved as a nail artist? Um, I feel like I was, I've always been kind of like, in a way, elitist. So I'm like, <laughs> I can draw, I can do this. And so stamping is blah, 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 blah. But now I've discovered stamping again and it's a whole new world. It's so good, it's so easy. So I can do hand painted and I can do exactly what the client wants or I can do stamping and get them out in like five seconds and I love it. So I have literally never stamped in my entire life. Oh. I'm going to choose the word purist instead of the word elitist. <laughs> I like the word elitist. <laughs> I don't know. But so my thing though with stamping is not so much that I don't think anyone else should um, stamp. Like that's fine. But when I first started doing nails, there probably were stamps. I, I'm sure there were stamps, but um, there was no Facebook. And I didn't know, I don't know about YouTube either. So I was very sheltered. You're not from, that old. There definitely was, was YouTube. I don't know, though. There uh, really YouTube's was. like 11 years old, and I've been a nail tech 11 yeah. years. Because Facebook's only like 10 years old. Yeah. Nah, I reckon there was YouTube. Yeah. There may have not have has been. It, there has not have Shane Dawson only had his channel like 10 years, and he's been on it since the start? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> if there was YouTube, like it old. was shite. So, and I didn't know about it. So um, I, I just think I was sheltered from, um, I totally lost my train of thought. From you were the, sheltered from the, from the world of yeah. stamping. Because, oh, stamping, stamping yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the same with my mom. Like, yeah. I think that's why, like, I know she loves to express herself with her nail art and she's got a few clients that she does, but I think she's the same. She trained so long ago that that stuff wasn't really around. Yeah, well, like, by the time, um, like I came became aware of what stamping was I had all these like I'd already taught myself to do it by hand yeah and I genuinely think that for most things not everything because some of the like really intricate patterns look amazing with stamps but a lot of things I'd be faster at it to just keep painting and I do have clients who are perhaps elitist um who will they love that I don't use stamps they're like like when and I think it would actually hurt the reputation very slightly if because they love when someone goes up to them and says oh is that a sticker and they can go no she only hand paints they love yeah, that i they do have a couple of clients like, like, like that, that but most most of the time i'm like oh yeah i'll go for hand painting but yeah. then there's some that i'm like shit i can't i can't do it that's like, i've got to do it stamping yeah there's a few stamps that would be really fun but i mean i'm happy i'm happy where i am if it if have it's not broken that, don't fix have it have you guys seen like the layered stamps so you know how yeah. traditional stamps are like one color there's layered stamping plates now oh fun yeah, so they're real cool so tony in the comments on our facebook live said i love how i'm listening to you guys talk about art and i'm hair painting my nails green <laughs> um for me nail art is my creative outlet i've never been good at art or anything so the fact that i can do nail art makes me really proud of myself yeah, oh, yeah tony so that kind of really nicely segs into my next question which is did you have any training because for me I I had that one minimal class <laughs> that we talked about and then I made up most of it like um and to be fair for the first few years it was very much just um it, like dots and very simple things especially because I was restricted to using traditional, traditional polish I did do one class like a half day class with someone um Michelle who actually is still like um I think a customer of, of Monaco's. Um, but I remember doing a class with Michelle where she taught us to sculpt shapes into our full sets of acrylics. So using colored powders and stuff. So I had that. Um, but really it wasn't until I went full time years later, like four or five years later, I went full time and I decided to do everything I, I could um, to be, I was like, if I'm going to be full time, I'm going to be the best, not just like average um and so I the first year that I was full-time I flew to Australia um for the beauty expo and I did a two-day course with Sam Biddle and I'd never heard of her sorry Sam I love you um <laughs> I'd never heard of her I'd never heard of anyone that was over there That's like a lot I was of so trust, sheltered though, for that too though like, yeah flew over totally. there without knowing her yeah I just I just wanted to be part of something I wanted to be immersed in the you industry 
No, I did not have <laughs> friends. I, which is not me being defensive. It's me being an introvert. Um, but um, I did two days of training with Sam. And I think it was less that I still do things she taught me then and more that she just inspired me. I was like, holy shit, I can do all of these things that are so different from what I've done before. And um, I only got... I mean, gel polish kind of came out and got big while I was overseas not doing nails. So when I did Sam's training, I'd only had gel polish for a few months. Mm -hmm. And so it was this whole world of gel paint, gel polish, pigment, like all sorts of fun things that I could play with. Um, so that was me. I don't even, I've done a couple of little nail art classes since, but mostly it's trial and error and play because mm -hmm. it goes back to that whole thing that for us, the motivation is play in the first place. So I, I'm not opposed to classes. I absolutely would love to go to more classes and Monaco has brought nail artists over. Like we brought Get Buffed over a while ago. We brought um, Caroline and Desiree from Australia over for um, some classes. We you, There's a few others. I know I'm forgetting some. Um, but we brought some people over and that was really cool because for me, I hate being in class, but I got to hang out and talk with these people and immerse myself without having to do the class and just pick up bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my thing. It, like what training have you guys done? Um, not to give you a big head, <laughs> Penny, but one of the like main reasons that I came to Monaco was after following you. Oh, um, one of the main reasons I came to Monaco was because I followed you on Instagram. Oh, and oh really? Like, no one this follows me on gross. Instagram. <laughs> this is awesome. Like, I want to do what this chick does because I'd already kind of played around with some stuff, and I was like, oh, I want to do a course that gets me a qualification, but I also want to learn this stuff. And I saw that you did extra courses and stuff. And as I said, taking the art of nails over the weekend made me, I guess, reinforce that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like I did make a really good choice in A, doing the foundation course, but B, getting those art of nail courses as well. Cause it, yeah. it taught me the correct way to do things. Cause YouTube and stuff is awesome. Like don't get me wrong, but there is a massive difference when you do a actual course that's for nail art and taught by a, yeah and it's funny the difference between youtube and online training yeah. even though they're both videos yeah. there's such a drastic difference between Definitely. a curated course and some youtube videos because like, the youtube videos they're just trying to get people to watch it and like it and stuff whereas if you're paying money to watch a video yeah. for someone to teach you something if you're watching like, this on youtube by the way please give us money you. and like it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah totally yeah. um janelle what training have you done um so i guess like i was saying had art as an actual medium training beforehand because I'd been in uni for art but like yeah like but yeah fine but, art right like graphic design yeah maybe? yeah yeah graphic <laughs> design fine art um anyway I corrected myself yeah yeah good um but other than that Monaco was kind of my only nail art thing and then everything else is just play yeah honestly plays the best like mm -hmm. nail art training is good and I mean I think Obviously, our nail art training is amazing. Nail art training, like, it's it a is good helpful. Base. It's yeah. a really yeah. good base, and then you can start playing. Yeah. Yes. But if you don't understand the, like, for example, how to put glitter on a on a nail. And sometimes know, a nail. playing gets you a result, but training gets you a shortcut. Yeah. Like, you learn in training how to do it an easier way. Or it makes you realize why it wasn't working before. Yeah. That's a lot of, I had a lot of light bulb moments over the weekend going, ah, okay, that's why that wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So um, Tony added in uh, while we were chatting about that for her, stamping is a great option for people who can't afford her hand painting but still yeah, want the true. quality of polish. So for her, it's an actual like, and it's an upgrade to get hand painted art. I should do that too. Yeah, yeah I think it's a valid point. Yeah. Um, and Cheyenne said, honestly, it's taken me two years of being a nail tech to actually confidently do nail art. My art has been using glitter and pigment in different ways of using gel polish, but coming up with art ideas is not my strong point. But if I'm given a pattern or some kind of idea, I can usually come up with my own take. Completely also, agree with yeah, that. Same. Yeah. Also, now that I have some solid clients that trust me in my work, um, it's given me the confidence to push outside my comfort zone of nail art and I've found my style and what I'm good at and have a new fire. Having trained in the Monaco nail art classes and learning the fundamentals to apply in my own way um, is finally paying off. Is she writing Which an is, essay too? Yes. <laughs> it's, it takes up the whole screen on the visual. <laughs> but I appreciate her input. Yeah, yeah I'm for sure. grateful. Um, no, but I totally agree though um, in terms of... So one thing that I 
touched on before. I said we'd touch on later, um, which sigs in nicely now. So for me, I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm a natural artist. I wouldn't say that I am like, I love it. Um, anyone that's known me for a long time will be shaking their heads because I did six art subjects at school. However, <laughs> I just passed each one. Um, and um, like, I, I love it. And I would spend all weekend, every weekend, just making and creating and doing fun things. And it's definitely what led me into actually enjoying nails, even though I'd already decided I wanted to do it. However, like Cheyenne said, um, I'll elaborate. So I'm not saying she's quite put it this way, but I have no imagination. Um, if you say, can you please do this? No, I can't. I can't come up with an idea from the words that you've just said out loud. But if you give me a like a concept Reference. and Google Images, yeah. then I can do anything because I'm a technical artist. But, yeah, I See, think I I'm the opposite. Yeah? I think, yeah. Well, we should work together. Yeah. But I was going to say, like, I don't I don't think that's a bad thing. No, I don't see all. it as a bad thing because so many artists use references. Yeah. That's how you get things proportionate. That's yeah. how you get, like, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. And yeah. I don't think you were saying it, it's a bad thing, but I just wanted to say Yeah, it no, totally. Thing. I think, like, um, like, in terms of do you, the listener, need training, I think, like, no, you don't. However, when we were saying before that, like, training can help, if you're completely not artistic, that's yeah. where training is actually really good because – like, for example, and this is not a plug, this is just an example, but in the hand-painted nail art class that we run occasionally, um, it's not a plug because it's not currently scheduled, um, but um, in that class that we do, I take you from doing really basic stuff in the morning to a full character in the afternoon, and it's only because I've taught you how to do a fine line, how to make it curve, how to transfer shapes, and it's all technical stuff. Mm -hmm. So do you need training? No, you can play. We've just talked about the benefits of playing, but can training help? If if you feel like you can't do anything, then yes, it can turn you into a technical nail artist, which I think is all I am. <laughs> that's, that's a good, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, because you can, like, a lot of people can have the imagination and a lot of artists do that they'll think of something and they'll put it down on paper. Yeah. Basically, all, all I do is think of something and put it onto. An I app. wish I could yeah. do that. Um, Zendri has said in the comments on our live feed, I also need images to do art. I struggle to just sit there and come up with something on my own. Preach, sister. That is me to a T. Yeah. Um, alrighty, so moving into, um, like, sigging again from what we were just talking about, where do we get our ideas from? So um, for me, I get my ideas from Google. <laughs> yeah, I get from Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. I, go, I go on Pinterest and I do try and do, like a lot of the stuff I do kind of copy mm. um, or I follow artists, like I said, follow Penny. Um, a lot of his stuff I can do though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Same, mate. a lot of my stuff um, that I kind of come up with, I'll sort of see a picture or something and I'll be like, ooh, that would look cool. Yeah. And I can kind of recreate it at, like, my interpretation. Um, I do still enjoy doing, you know, copying someone's abstract or colours or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's kind of where mine comes from. My favourite thing to do is to copy something that is not nails at all. Yeah. yeah so, I was just going to say my stuff, like, my inspiration comes from patterns of, like, fabric or yeah. wallpaper. Like, last week with your guys. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, like, yeah. I've, I've been really eyeing up these mugs at Kmart. I'm like, I want to get one to drink from, drink my massive cup of coffee from. With my matching nails. <laughs> yeah, with my matching nails, because then I can actually paint it, and yeah. I've got a reference there in front of me. I am, um, like, my favorite stuff that I've ever done has always been someone bringing in a dress or a pair of shoes. Nice. Or even just custom colors based on a lipstick. Like, that's still fun to me, even yeah. though it's just a color. But if I can make their nails I match their lipstick identically. That's so fun for me. Um, but yeah, I prefer not to copy nails. Yeah. But um, like I, I've got two clients I, yeah, that I absolutely that. love to have copy nails, and I'm like, Ugh. yeah, so I do my best I of trying to to recreate it, but still add in my own thing or yeah. change it up slightly. I'm much less likely to share a photo of something that I've copied direct yeah. directly. Yeah. Or just at least I'm if I can get not credit. As excited. Yeah. Like, oh, well, happily, if I do copy. I'll give credit if I post it, but I'm just, I don't care as much because I'm not as excited by it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but definitely if I'm, if I'm trying to think of something to do, then I'll go on Google images and just search nail art and I'll scroll until I find a piece of something that I like. And my finished result will usually be like two or three different sets put together Yeah. or, or a piece of a set that yeah. I've just done. 
Um, so again, um, if you're watching our live feed, tag a friend in the comments who would um, be interested in what we're chatting about. We do this every Monday at 5 p.m. at live, and then it goes onto YouTube, um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all sorts of places the very next day. So let's chat about the opposite of what we've been saying, artist's block. Oh, so, don't get me started. I well, know this, me, this is a good... Get me started because we can talk about this it. This is a good Janelle, <laughs> Janelle question because I know that you're just now coming out of a funk at the moment, yeah, right? Yeah, Okay, so how do you think that you ended up with artist's block? Fully just like because of my mental state with how I was feeling in terms of my work environment and everything like that and like clients would come in and for some reason I just... They'd be like, can we try this with this and this? And I'm like... Uh, trying to just think of it and yeah. imagine it which yeah totally just couldn't fully blocked um but managed to it was actually all of my pinterest designs i yeah. was like can we just have a little bit of freedom and my clients were like yeah do what you want on it because they knew i could do art i just yeah. couldn't do what they wanted right then and so with that freedom i was like shit i can do whatever i want pinterest here's my board and then they chose what they liked and I recreated it and it was like a light bulb went off. Yeah. I'm like, I can do art again. <laughs> yeah. I started um, my, my main thing. It's not quite artist's block, but I, um, people will come in and it, honestly, it's the later their appointment is like, it's the 8 PM clients that'll come in and be like, do what you want. And I'm like, Oh my God, what I'm, do I want? I'm at the end. I want to go home. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I want to do a good job of your nails, but I don't want to be thinking. Yeah. Um, I'm going on autopilot for this last hour. Um, but so what I started doing was um, scrolling through Instagram every couple of days and screenshotting. Like if I want an idea for myself, Google images, but I will scroll through Instagram and screenshot other people's work. And I have a Facebook group for my clients. Um, and so every couple of days I'll post ideas into this Facebook group um, and they'll comment on the ones that they like and um, sometimes they'll screenshot cool ones idea. that specifically I know certain clients will like and if they comment and go can we have these then I'll comment back and be like yes but can I switch them up and they're like oh sure okay so then I then I have like I already know someone wants to get it so I have time to go okay well Melissa's at 8 p.m on Wednesday but she has commented on that and now I've got a mental plan for what parts of that design I want to put into her nails and it's just so much easier yeah. to get past that. I mean, it's not quite artist's block, but like that's that's what I do. Mm. Have you hit that? I haven't really yet? experienced that yet. Mine is more convincing my clients to get nail art because most of them are military and we have to have boring nails. Yeah. So that's the other thing that causes a lot of block is like you wanting to be able to do yeah. it and you've got like this massive passion, but your clients just don't. Yeah. And so you've, you totally feel frustrated and what do you do? Well, funnily enough, the next question I was going to ask Penny with those is, um, is how to get clients into it. But before we go into that, I just want to read a couple of um, comments from people that are watching us. So um, we've had um, Zendra is a, a Pinterest convert in terms of getting ideas um but again she tries to mix and match so very similar to us um and cheyenne saying that fabric is one of her favorites mm. so that's honestly can, like sometimes i wish i could have extra money so i could go to spotlight and just get like a fabric squatches. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. um what i've done in the past is um just go on to like um what's it called asos oh yeah and just screenshot the clothes so, like, dresses and stuff, just yeah, screenshot good, the patterns good, of the clothes. Good thinking, mate. Um, Tony said artist block is real mostly with her own nails. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And she she also does something really cool with, like, asking her audience what they want to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I am, which Tony is TLC or TLC dot nails, nails or yeah. TLC nails in Z. You got Google her. She's amazing. <laughs> um, but um, She'll I. She'll be on the podcast one day, surely. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Um. I just, my nails are so much easier than anyone else's because I will have, I don't know, I don't have a bank of that many things that I want to do and I will let myself do anything I want to do. So yeah, like, Actually, that's right. I Because I change, because I wear a uniform during the week, no shit, every weekend my nails will be a different color because I'm like, oh, I've got this new glitter. Oh, oh I really want to try this. Like, yep. For Halloween, I did a vampire, and I could only do it on my non-master hand because I'm cat-handed. Um, and we all. Yeah. But 
Oh, yeah. I love doing my own nails because I can do whatever I want. Yeah, exactly. I am totally happy if yeah. I paint one hand and then get bored and go to bed. Yeah. I don't mind at all. Oh, see, <laughs> I mind. That's oh, I'm no. yeah. I, I'm much I nicer do... to myself. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be able to it. do what Mariah did last week and have two different nails. I'd be like, no. You oh, I can. Oh, I, I used, always to, I used to be nails. able to when I was training. Now, can't do it. But also, um, I will often have real cool stuff on my easy hand and then a matching color on the other yeah. hand and, like, that's enough. Yeah, it's oh, totally yeah. not enough And colors now. are easy for me because I just chuck on something dark and sparkly and then I'm good. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Tony's Insta is tlc.nailsnz for those of you that want to go and stalk her. And Mariah is contributing in the comments saying her block actually comes from too many ideas. So that's mm -hmm. it. We can't be yeah. friends with Mariah anymore. Yeah, get out. Yeah, yeah no, I feel you, yeah. I feel you Mariah. <laughs> so um, the next one that we were sticking into is how do you get clients into nail art? I have a couple of ideas, but... Honestly, I still don't know. <laughs> I start with block colors and glitter. Okay. That's how I've got, like, um, all of my clients that are sort of, I'm only a one color girl. I'm like, why don't we try glitter? Yeah. Or, like, even if glitter's too out there, I'm like, why don't we try one feature nail that's a slightly different color? Yes. And then they're like, they come back two weeks or th two or three weeks later and they're like, I loved it. I want more. Yes. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, let me add this too. And Some, it just builds up over time. Sometimes I find that glitter is a little too much. Yeah. Um, for sometimes more either older clients or people that think they're older. I have this bracket of clients. So I have this theory that until about 23, 24, you don't give a shit. And then from 24 to 35, you think you're supposed to give a shit. And then when you turn, like there's a middle ground where people are in a gray area. But when you turn 50, you're like, I don't give a flying F anymore. I'm going to have my damn glitter. Yeah. But there's like this age in the middle that I think we're all in, but we've kind of skipped. Hey, where you're say. supposed to think that you are mature now. You're a grown up now. And so people don't get as much glitter. It's actually, I, it's funny you say that. So I've had a client. She's a friend of mine. And I know she's not listening. But um, she, we did some really cool nail art with um, stamps on hers. And then she's like, oh, I need to get it removed. I've got a presentation. And I was like, so? <laughs> and she's like, oh, but no, I need them plain for that. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, so in your contract, does it say that? And she's like, no, I just, I need them plain. And I couldn't understand, but that makes sense. Yeah. Like, she's she in the bracket. That she needs to be, like, all mature and You stuff. have to, yeah, you You've want to, to sensible, present yourself yeah. as the, what you think people want you to be. Well, because to be fair, now that's only really been a huge, especially now that I'm all nails and, you know, characters and stuff, it's only been around for a, not that long, Not really. that long. Like, people were crazy if they got a full set of glitter, yeah, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I think it's probably, too, inspired by the media. Like, yeah. when Harry and Megan got married, it was all about, oh, her one-color nude nanny. Because it was that's, beautiful. That's, that's all they're yeah. allowed, though. Yeah. So everything's kind of like, you've got to be sensible. You've got to be ladylike yeah. and only yeah. have that one color. Yeah. And then Lady Gaga's out there with all their, like, sparkles well, and like stuff. Well, like Cardi B, like, her, yeah. her full Swarovski crystal yeah. Yeah. nails. Like, yeah. I am um, it's either Megan or Cardi B. Or <laughs> yeah, no, either or. No well, so I had a client who worked um, in a very, very male-centric industry, and she would only get plain because she was genuinely too afraid to be seen as like too feminine. Like oh. her industry, she was in um, uh, what's it called? Like um, she valued commercial buildings. Like she, oh, what's okay, that? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Like a property valuer, I guess. Um, and it was all guys, and it was all older guys as well. So she struggled enough to be taken seriously without also having like glitter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I won't name her, but we called her like we when she took leave, we'd go um, holiday Rochelle's booked in, like because she could get <laughs> whatever it. she wanted. Um, but I would say my gateway drug is ombres because mm. I'm a massive pigment devotee. And I am like, I feel like glitter is a little more too out there for some people, mm. but I can talk anyone into a baby boomer and then they start going, okay, what else can we fade? And then eventually I get them into a glitter fade and then I get them into oh, the that's glitter. That's a good way. So th that, that, that's me. That's pigments are my gateway drug for color. <laughs> <Gateway drug. laughs> I love that so. <laughs> but, um, so uh, Cheyenne has said she starts with foil. 
Her clients are easier oh, to yeah. sell foil than glitter. Just a feature nail, and then maybe they move on to glitter or a feature abstract nail. And since she's been swatching all her nail art and has it on show, they work their way up to hand painted. Mm -hmm. Which the swatching thing is a good point because um, my clients used to go all off swatches. Like I had a big board with like stuff, and people would choose from it. And when I got rid of it, there was uproar. Um, <laughs> but now I have a whole wall covered it, and no one ever looks. No one cares. However, I post apart all of students. apart from my <laughs> students, but um, I have my my public Facebook page and Instagram. Um, but I also have that group I talked about before, and um, in that gro group, I post pictures of everything I did yesterday. It's not curated. It's not like these are the ones I want to show you. It's everything. And I'll get people commenting, being like, who's are these? I need to ask if I can copy them. And I'll get more from that oh, um, yeah. than necessarily having swatches for them to browse. Um, plus, my clients that are super into nail art, uh, like, they're bringing pictures. Yeah. Like, if they're they really into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've even got my clients following other nail techs because they're like, I like this design. I'm like, okay, great. Let's change it. Yes, <laughs> but it's all it's all from actual other nail tech, so it's not yeah. like yeah. I think the media has a lot to answer for in the way of how nail art has evolved. Yeah, like look at Instagram and all the hashtags you can look up. You yes, know, and all that kind of stuff, and people are getting hashtags are great, insane, especially nail hashtag Learn at Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's definitely how client. I think a client, yeah, they can be talked into it, but I think to a certain extent they have to kind of come to that themselves. Yeah, they yeah. That's what gateway drugs are for. Yeah. Um, Tony said, glitter and pigment is my way to get in as well, or really basic stamping. Then when people compliment their nails between appointments, it confirms that their nails are awesome, mm. and then they slowly step out of their comfort zone and trust me more each time. I think, and because a lot of people, I know we try and build a society where we don't judge, but people do. Like, people are going to look at your nails and either be like, those are awesome, or what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you're 30 you've got kids you should have daylight like, you know <laughs> you whatever. should be boring yeah now. yeah so i think you're right in that age bracket but then yeah if you get those compliments people are going to be like holy crap those are awesome i tell you the other gateway drug that i just remembered christmas oh everyone because at christmas, christmas everyone like people that get nude all day every day like i've got one client that gets um either red or french every time for the last seven years um every now and then she'll try a different nude or like so every time she'll call me two days later and be like, I hate this. Um, <laughs> but I, I tell her, I'm, are you sure you want that? And But then at Christmas, glitter, who knew? So <laughs> and so all these people come out of the woodwork and suddenly get nail out and like blooming reindeers and crap because it's Christmas and they want to be festive. But then the thing is you just catch them and then yeah. they don't go off nail art. <laughs> Christmas yeah, okay, is the gateway drug. One, yeah. um, Cheyenne just said as well, Christmas is so easy. Yes, yeah. Christmas is actually my new verified gateway drug other yeah. than baby boomers. <laughs> or Halloween as well. People usually go out. Like if people are into Halloween, like I am it a Halloween freak. It depends if they're a Halloween, Halloween person. Yeah. And so I, yeah, Halloween is was my gateway. I think when I first started getting my nails done because I'm a nail butter, um, I think Halloween was when I was like, oh, yeah. I'll get nail All art. of my nail art girls go more hard out for Halloween, but my plain color girls, they don't. don't do they're not Halloween yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but so here's a here's a question. How much do you charge? How do you know what to charge? Um, not enough, clearly. Well, I think for me, I'm still in the stigma of I'm just learning because I'm – like I've passed my job polish exam and, and that, but I – I am one of those people where I was, if I'm not good at something straight away, I've failed. And I think I'm good at nail art until I put it on someone and they're like, oh, that's not how I wanted it to look. And then oh I'm my like, gosh, oh, who crap. says that? Who says that? A couple of my clients. Oh my God. And rude. so we kind of start again. And then I'm like, oh, but for me, I kind of just charge, I sort of cover my costs and then not really my time. Yeah. But I don't really do a lot of, other than my abstract and my new favorite geodes that I learned in the weekend from the nail art course. Um, I don't really charge a lot like compared to you, Penny. Yes. Yeah. I haven't been doing it that long and I don't do really do hand painted as such. Um, I'll probably charge uh, like more at Christmas and I have a set price. So $55 encompasses all the nail art you want and as gel polish. Oh yeah. Yeah. I kind of do that now. Yeah. Um, 
Although, oh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, it's shameless self promo. <laughs> um, our um, one of our salon success, which so we've got three sets of online courses: Tech Booster, which is practical skills, Art of Nails, which Rochelle's been talking about, and then Salon Success, which is business related, um, and. The, one of the selling success modules, how to set your prices, has a nail art calculator in it, um, which is like bomb. I need so, to look at that because I have. Yeah, I was gonna I say, have I have really that on my dash. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so shameless self promo. But um, for me, I charge a lot less now than I used to, and that's for quite a specific reason. When I was, and I firmly don't believe in this like per nail price that people do. I don't. I don't do that. I don't um, do that anymore. I did. But I, I don't it's like it really anymore. It's really hard to like, if they only get, I don't know, one nail or three nails. Or and there's a, just, there's uh, such a uh, difference. Like 10 nails of something is not the same as two nails of that thing. It's like some designs, that's a nightmare. Like you want 10 nails of Scooby's face? No, that's hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. But if you want 10 nails of polka dots, that is not 10 times what I'd charge for one polka dot and nail like yeah. it's you can't just do that so um i used to basically have like other than maybe glitter feature nails i had a base charge of about 15 dollars for two feature nails but then like so for example polka dots i'll do 10 15 dollars for polka dots on all nails like it's so quick and easy yeah. um so it really does vary i would say that it is based on the product you used um the time it took and also just the skill they're paying for. Like they, the client is paying for how good you are. Um, and you can't factor that easy. Well, on our calculator you can, but you can't factor that in easily to be like, oh, I'm worth this. Especially yeah. because so many of us have confidence issues. And self-doubt um, and yeah. 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 Whereas so now um, for my regulars, because I don't take on that many new clients, um, so for my regulars, I do a much more set price kind of thing. All of my regulars know exactly how much their nails are going to cost every week. Um, and so I have $55 for half an hour, similar to what you were saying. Mm-hmm. And in half an hour, I'll do whatever I can fit in in terms of nail art. So if they come in with an idea, I'll say, okay, that's more of a one-hour design, but... Um, you know, I can fit this, like I can do, do it as feature nails, I can do whatever. So I have $55, I have 85. And then it's basically like in 15 minutes, $15 blocks after that. Yeah. Um, so they'll, they'll say, can I book an extra 15 minutes, because they know their nail art is complicated, but I'm not actually charging for what the art is. I'm just looking at it and going, Time I can do that. Yeah, I can do that in probably 15 extra minutes. And so they'll just book 15 extra minutes for 15 extra dollars. Um, that's a good way of looking at it it's just simplified things it's yeah. definitely I'm definitely don't make as much money for it anymore um, people were really happy to be paying a lot more but it is simpler and yeah. that's really what I wanted to do was simplify yeah and it simplifies your price list as well yeah like your price list is one of the like few that I've seen for someone of such prestige to be such a simple price she's list. really talking about she's really she? is. Oh, shit. <laughs> But no, I I follow you too. (laughs) I've strived specifically for it to be very simple because I did my time of it being like five dollars for soak off, five dollars for correction gel, five dollars like no, it's just fifty five dollars for a manicure, like add on for IBS, whatever. Yeah, it's very very simple now. Um, what about you, Janelle? Like other than your oh my god, don't ask me. But (laughs) do you have anything to add on pricing? Um. Not really, I guess. I probably, I know I really need to evaluate, like, my timing. And I'll, just from doing this podcast, I'm like, oh, shit, I should really charge more for hand-painted than I do with stamping because it takes oh, more time. Oh, yes. Um, which I haven't been. Like, I've just been chilling with chilling with my different types of design ideas stuff because um, I charge 30, not 30, where, where did that come from? I charge 65 for something with art. Um, like minimal art and then 85 for more detailed work. Yeah. But really I need something in the middle just for stamping because fifty dollars with my plane money. Yes. Um, and if it's only gonna take a few more seconds to to do some stamping, like I really don't need to add half an hour extra for this extra time that I'm now charging for. Yeah. So yeah. The, That's my the one addition. exception is if I do character stuff. If they have asked for it specifically, then I will charge for it. And and if they're asking for it specifically, it's usually for something 
like really special or important and they know they've budgeted in for months in advance to pay me an extra hour mm -hmm. however if i say this looks real fun and i know it fits your style do you want to do it they'll be like yeah how much will it be and i'll be like i don't know an extra 15 but it's because it's it's playtime for me yeah. but on a human yeah. so i'm like just getting an extra 15 because i don't want to devalue myself completely and teach them that my art is worth nothing yeah. but if i'm going to spend an hour on it because i want to render bambi 3d instead of doing it from like 2d Who that's on me that? that's but it's a challenge it's playtime so i'll just pick the right person and be like i'll give you this for 15 dollars and they're like okay that sounds fun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, all right. Um, That's cool. So Cheyenne contributed in the comments that it depends on what they get, but usually starting from about $10. So she also has sort of a base price to at least start from. Um, I think that's good. Like my mm. clients are very much like they know the base. They know what because most of them are regulars as well. Um, they know what they can roughly fit into the regular appointment time they get. So they know how to sort of budget their allowance if that makes yeah. sense yeah. um alrighty so let's um start winding this down with our favorite nail artists me sorry um, <laughs> they all know well, what i'm gonna say <laughs> well how about you choose someone else um, <laughs> i follow recently um now's your chance in the comments by the way to chuck in your favorites and we'll, we'll read thoughts? them out Yes, she's love really Katie. Good. Yeah. She, nail um, thoughts. Nail thoughts. She's got this really nail cool what now? Nail thoughts. thoughts. Nail thoughts. Yeah, yeah not okay. thoughts. She does have a hashtag nail thoughts, but yeah. it is nail thoughts. Yeah. Um, and she's she, she's got some real interesting different ways. Of yeah, doing stuff. she has such an imagination that yeah. it's like, and she's a really cool person. Yeah, she's so sweet. Yeah. Um, I met nail underscore wolf oh. when I was in LA. I love her. Oh, she yeah. is so, 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 so sweet. I follow so, so many people that I honestly, my brain, I can't um, do right now. <laughs> buff, buff CS Gen or like the Buff CS team, uh, oh, they've got some real cool, sh real cool shit. Fingerbang has fun stuff. Yes, love Fingerbang. Um, I don't know if it's Asabri or Asabri, A S A B R E E. She's she's so wicked. Um, oh, off the top of my head, who else? Selena Ryden. <sighs> favorite yeah, yeah 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 selena ryden is definitely she's more like one of my long-term favorites though like i'm i feel like um like no shade but i feel like her style is so specific that i'm slightly almost kind of maybe don't want to say it but slightly bored of it now because it's a it's incredible absolutely incredible but it's so specific to her style that i'm not like oh there's another cool thing it's like oh she did that same thing in a really cool way again mm. um but i do love her though and then also um tino vo yeah vo dot tino yeah. um they do some amazing stuff yeah um oh. definitely and um nails by tony but boy tony t-o-n-y oh uh, yeah um i think that's what it is is it nails by tony uni stella she's an amazing i think she's She's either nails she by Tony? underscore Tony, T O N Y, and what Uni Stella? Uni Stella, yeah. I'd definitely say Tino Vo. Oh, and nail, nails, na nail, Uni Stella. Nani, nail, nail, Uni Stella. I would say nails by Tony and Vo Tino are my Vo dot Tino are my number one favorites at the moment, yeah, and then Selena Ryden's just me. like my ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um. Zendre said Home of Diva. Um, Cheyenne is another um, Selena Ryden girl. Zendre said she loves the nail art Sarah does. And I'm assuming that that is um, Sarah from Glossed Nails by Sarah, who's a Monaco graduate. And um, I'm assuming that's who she means. And I totally back that. Sarah does some really cool oh, like, yeah. abstract floral stuff. Sarah Zane. And it's really, really cool. Um, Tony's also backing Home of Diva um, and said, I think this is related to Home of Diva, but she said um, she does amazing character art. Um, so that those are a few other ideas um, for, um, yeah, Cheyenne's coming in like, there's too many. Yeah, definitely. Um, alrighty, so no last minute ones that you guys want to check in? Um, other than myself. Ha, ha, ha. Well, we're about to move into the shameless self promo okay, good. section. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're fine. Um, 
everyone's just saying in the comments now that there's too many. <laughs> so yeah. we've overloaded yeah. everyone and everyone's going to spend all night scrolling through the Instagram pages that we just mentioned now. Sounds good. So I mean, to be fair, same. <laughs> Although I, we've been um, working through a boxing app at home now, so I know what's waiting for me at home is boxing. <laughs> And then, and then I won't be able to move my arms to scroll through Instagram. So you guys, no joke, you won't be able to move your pinky. I couldn't do it after after doing boxing. I couldn't move my pinky. I'm like, I, I was my arm was shaking trying to clean off the whiteboard today in the middle of class. (laughs) Um, Cheyenne's back in Kirsty Meekin from Neo Nails as well. Oh yeah. Um, so alrighty so before we wind this up if you have been listening no matter where you're listening from um, before you do disappear like our page um, or follow the podcast wherever you're listening to it so that you don't miss the next episode Um, I am Penny and my um, what my username thing handle is Penny Lawler Nail Artist so um, L-A-W-L-E-R is the bit in the middle Um, and I've been hanging out with Janelle who is Plume nail design. <laughs> P-L-U-M for mother, E. Yes, nail there's design. definitely an E. Don't forget the E. <laughs> um, and uh, we had a brief appearance by Mariah, who is wished for nails, but she's definitely a loved part of the podcast team. So give her some love. And finally, we've been hanging out with Rochelle, who is? Aphrodite.iris. Awesome. So we're all on um, Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you want to spend more time with us, facebook.com slash Monaco Nail Academy. Um, but either way, um, like or follow, chuck some comments in um, if you have been watching live next week. Oh, I can't remember what we're doing next week. Do no, Avatars. We, so, okay, this is a super, super no, niche. It's, well, I feel like it's niche. I think it's, super important and you'll understand I, I can't do a hard sell on it but like it's gonna it changed my marketing life oh, in terms like of bots? no I don't oh. um so if you need more clients basically like full stop if you need more clients then next week I'm gonna oh, blow your I'm mind um, and so are you back next week Rochelle okay. Um, yep. Yes, Janelle will be with us hopefully Mariah will get that um sound sorted out um as well and mariah can be back with us in the meantime um check us a follow or a like thanks for listening and we will see you guys next time bye, bye.